Just going for some 15, 10 games. Has it started? Okay, there we go. Let's attack the pawn. Let's see if the, our basics are working. We're not doing too bad performance-wise. I think there's a few things still to be worked on. It's more, it's more the reaction to what the opponent does when they are suddenly in end game mode, you know, so early on, or they're finding an end game position early on, and you're kind of scrabbling to try and find a better position. So I'm, I want to see if I can try and work on that. And so I'm not looking to blast out there. I'm just looking at what it is that, you know. When the opponent suddenly, out of nowhere, they seem to grab this magical sort of end game process. So we're in the opening stage at this moment in time. So I'm going to try and work with what we're doing in the opening and also have a look at what the opponent is doing as a opening type thing. And if they're trying to circumvent the mid game and they're jumping into the end game. So this person's got a long pause now. So are they looking at jumping the mid game and looking to try and get some quick and dirty tactic type thing? So that's one of the key things that I've seen when I've been watching players play and my, my, game, my games included as well, is sometimes if we are just so focused on the opening and the opponent is actually coming out and they're already in the end game, you can get caught short. So their quick and dirty type tactic could work because we're still just getting out of our bed and they're jumping all over as well. We're still in our bed. So we haven't got a chance to get out of the bed, get out of the covers, get our clothes on and get ready for the fight. So it's knowing when the quick and dirty tactic is coming in. It's not always the case of like the basic fried liver type stuff. There, there are other other avenues for the opponents to go for quick and dirty tactics. But what I don't want to do is fall into the realms of waiting for the opponent to attack because then that is me just waiting in my bed, waiting for them to attack and I'm not ready. So I still need to get ready, still get, get prepared and also be the one maybe trying to generate attacks on my opponent as well not quick and dirty tactics. If they are there, they're there, but I really want to have a good follow-up position from that type of attack, just in case it goes wrong, because inevitably they will go wrong the higher up the sort of rating ladder you go, um, because obviously people may be expecting those types of things or they may use them as traps to let you overextend and then fall into their trap. So they might actually be under the bed covers with all the tools ready. They're already dressed, but they're just pretending to be asleep. So you have to be very careful in those situations. Coming back. And they abandoned the game. What an absolute waste. I've got a 15-10. Hopefully this one's going to play the game through. So what we were saying in the first game earlier on today was we're looking, we want to look at really trying to circumvent the opponent's end game because it seems like they're going, they're finding the end game earlier. You know, it looks like they, they're sort of like doing opening part of mid and then straight into end game. It doesn't always work for them, but sometimes it does surprise the game. So we're currently in this opening stage. As we've been practicing, we've been looking at the specifics for my personal game of the opening, the mid game and the end game. Everybody's opening, mid game, end game is going to be different. You'll think of it differently. Um, 
what I am trying to work out in my head is utilizing the answer process, um, knowing where I'm at in the game, and trying to make sure that I'm making the appropriate moves for the correct phase at the right time. But I think that also kind of, it doesn't negate what the opponent's doing, but what I want to look at is, well, what realistically stage is the opponent is in now? Are they looking to actually finish the game? So are they like a phase ahead of me? So I've got to really look at the balance between, okay, I'm in opening, mid and end, but where is my opponent? We're trying something different here, obviously, because we brought the bishop out. Normally, we would just take this knight off the board, but we brought the bishop supporting, brought the queen now to attack. So we could bring this pawn to attack as well, well, defend rather. Does block our knight a little bit. I'm going to do that anyway. This pawn doesn't have any protection on. Can't really bring the bishop here to defend because it's blocking the queen from protecting this area. Although, are they really going to take and then have a pawn take? Yeah, I suppose they could still take anyway. I'm going to attack the knight then. So, still in opening stage because I'm opening up my pieces. The opponent's opening their pieces up as well. Different take on the word opening, but yeah, getting them open, out in the open. King's getting ready to get safe. So the might then jump straight into mid game, snapping up a piece. So that is the, I'm just trying to change it in my head, trying to get, no, they've not taken, so they've not, jumped into a mid game type thing because we're both still in the opening and I think when things are taken off the board it's it's almost jumping into the mid game even though your kings aren't even safe so could still take but his bishop can take pawn opens up I think I'm just going to castle so that's my opening stage done as far as I'm concerned now that's done I know I've got this knight on the back so let's reframe. We, we did say we're not going to rush it if we don't have to, so that we know where we're at. Still, if we bring it here, it is blocking this knight. This has got three pieces attacking. So we could bring it out to a come here. And then that's our opening stage done. Right, so our opening stage is done. Theirs is done as far as they're concerned, apart from the fact they've got this bishop on the back. So they're behind the tempo, but I believe they're going to attack and jump straight into mid game, which should then be a slight advantage to us. I'm just thinking out loud, um, slight advantage to us because they're still in their bed and yet they're going to attack. They might not do though, but if they did attack, Okay, right, so they're wanting to release, they want to come out of the bed. Yeah, they want to come out of the bed, so they've attacked. In my head, I'm thinking they've attacked and they're still in their bed. That should be something better for us, shouldn't it? We can take the palm because it's got no protection anyway, so we can attack. Then his knight is going to attack. The bishop still hasn't got out of the bed, so they've lost a little bit of tempo. But has it improved our position at all in any way, shape or form just because of that? So that's the story I'm telling myself here. The fact that, yes, they're not out of the bed. They've gone straight into mid-game. I'm going to take the pawn. So the knight is going to take the pawn. Our knight's on the edge. Probably need to get it around or potentially attacking their bishop. So the knight does take. We could take this um, knight off the board. The queen is defending at the moment. Has he got a way in towards our king, as we already say? I think we could just continue and attack the bishop. He's going to attack our bishop, but we've got a. Uh, 
kind of a discovery on the Queen. So there's a lot of stuff happening. I need to slow my brain down. Um, it's because I'm just trying to in introduce this new way of thinking um, based on what we've been working on, the opening, mid-game and end-game phases for our side. And now I'm trying to blend it in with what the opponent is actually doing with all the other concepts as well in the answer process. One of the key things is that this bishop was still in its bed and they did an attack. So they're not really ready. That's what I'm saying anyway. So I'm actually going to attack the bishop with the knight. I do think he's going to take here. That might have been the wrong move, you know. Something's telling me, but anyway. No, it's not. Okay, it can't be that bad. Something's telling me he's going to be taking the bishop. Then we're going to have a discovery on the queen. So again, because they're attacked, They've attacked while they were asleep with the bishop, not really linked up the rooks in a way. Maybe we're going to win a slightest of tempo. It all links in, all the stuff, you know, the initiatives, the tempos, the blind spots covering all of those aspects there. Smaller pieces attacking higher pieces to, to win those crucial time periods. I genuinely think if you know what state, what phase you're at in the game, it does help help the moves. I'm not saying I'm going to win this. I'm trying to convince myself that that is it's a a working concept. I just don't like too much complications. I should in our or normal game we would just take that knight off the board, but I just try, thought try this um, keeping the tension thing which really does annoy me, actually. I, I don't really like doing that. So that's one mistake that I've made in this game already, is that not really doing what I am what I usually do. But I do believe it's nice, because it's a practice session, it's, it's nice to be able to practice them so at least you understand what it is that can be done differently. So then I'm not caught short if I do forget a particular move um, and I don't actually want to take it, then I know at least I can keep the tension and improve my position on the board. So there's options and choices. I prefer to take pieces off the board because it's simple, but sometimes you have to keep the tension in order to maintain a better position and let the opponent actually take. But when those circumstances occur and when to do it, that's the that's the tricky bit. This person's taking a long break, like in the first one. Are they going to be abandoning too? But it is a rapid play. You can take as long as you want, but I mean, abandoning the games is a bit it's a bit bad, really, and it's a waste of time. Nobody's learning from that type of situation. Yeah, so however you open, you can whatever technique or using somebody's name to do your opening, and that sets you up. But for me now, it's looking at the mirror aspect of, well, it's not just you playing. You've got an opponent who is also opening up as well. How many moves is he doing to open up? Is he just using one move and then he's blasting away, attacking your king area? You know, I did envisage that they were going to move the knight for some strange reason. So what's the knight doing? Because the thing is, that they're still not really fully out of their bed. And we've put them into a mid-game now. I'm trying to win some tempo to say, look, because you are late to the party, this is what is actually going to happen to you. So we could take... Because he's wanting us to take on his terms. So if we take his knight, then his queen comes here. I'm not saying that that's a bad move. And his, his queen comes here. His queen's all by itself. It's moved twice. But I really want this bishop off the board, I think. It's going to take with this one. Rook's going to be here. So take in here. Maybe the knight takes... So what's he thinking? If we don't take this knight, then this knight can jump here. He's got the support of his bishop, his sleeping bishop. His queen's coming across, attacking the king somehow. Coming across here, attacking this side. 
options and choices. Take, queen takes. Ooh, let me see, let me see which one. Simple direct moves to remove pieces from the board strategically. Now he's got pieces in front of our king. That doesn't, that doesn't make us happy, does it? But if we take, his queen takes, and then he's going to be, on our bishop, the knight's also going to be here. So the knight will take the bishop, pawn takes, and then the queen takes the pawn type situation. So let's look at it. We grab, queen grabs. If we don't do anything to support the bishop, then that goes. So we could move here, but then his white square bishop will come here. But if it did do that, the knight would be able to take. So a bit of baiting going on. So I think the best move is actually taking the knight. Because of the potential pieces from our opponent being gathered around our king. If I take the bishop, he's still got his knight and his queen and his bishop ready to do some sort of action. That's my rationale. We do take, he takes, bring the queen up. Maybe the rook comes across to support. Can bring our rook across as well. I'm going for the knight. Let's take the knight off the board. Take the pieces away from what can cause our king, our alone king, problems. That's my rationale. I'm sticking to it. When you look at the picture, we could go here. Pawn attacking the queen. If the knight takes, the bishop takes with the support from the rook. So that's not going to happen. So the queen will probably probably stay here to keep pressure in the king area. Oh, it'd actually take the bishop off the board. What am I on about? Takes that there, there. We just take the bishop off the board. It's good to talk. So we said we we're going to bring the queen here. Bishop doesn't have any protection on, so the big queen is also protecting. But I don't want to trap the bishop, just in case. Then they start dropping here. I suppose we then can come and attack the knight. Knight will make the decision to take. And do we go for a queen exchange? Not really because of this bishop type thing, but... Continue as is, as what we said. If the bishop comes here, we can take with the knight. So our alone king is being looked after at the moment. And they've gone for what we said. So we're going to bring the bishop here. That's correct. There's nothing else that can attack it straight away. Then they'll probably just take the bishop off the board with the knight. Yep, let's just do that. We're trying to clean out house. I mean, if they go here, I suppose, takes, then the queen's here in front of the king. But it's there by itself, which we're more happy with. So it's not negating all of the other cons. Oh, well, no, that was a shocker. We didn't expect that. So are they going for a queen exchange then? So hitting the end game. Are they going to exchange, do you think? What's our position like? Does it look any better? It looks the same, same, doesn't it? So if we, if we take, if the queen takes, and we've got the two bishops, but you know I don't lay out much takes there, or have we fallen into a trap of some sort? So they take him, we can take. Oh, 
or shall we just take or shall we just take with the queen see what happens take with the queen oh food delivery okay let's get back to what we were so we're going for the queen won't we so let's go with that and see if they go for the exchange they have done so do we take with the bishop i suppose we take with the bishop keeps the pawns in line doesn't it let's take with the bishop I think the knight's going to move because he's not going to want to disjoint his pawns. So where does he go? Um, could go anywhere really, couldn't it? It's not going to go there. Could go here attacking the bishop. So we'll have to sit and wait and see what's happening here. So I feel quite happy that we've got rid of the potential attack it towards their king or towards our king based on the sole fact that this bishop was asleep and they were attacking before they were basically jumping straight into the mid game without actually finishing the opening so i'm quite happy that we could break that down i know there'll be people going well you're talking a load of rubbish but for me Help, it helps with my a better understanding of the position and stuff that's going on on the board. Bishop can attack their rook, but are we developing their rook for them? Could bring the rook, rook here, but then his knight's going to jump anyway because our bishop doesn't have any protection. If we weren't for bishops of opposite colour, probably be a draw, wouldn't it? So if we take, then they take. Yeah, so that would be very simplified. And I don't have any problem going for simplified at the end of the day. It's the, it's the game, isn't it? Um, could move the bishop back just to have its own protection. Where's this knight realistically going, though? Can it challenge? It can't really challenge anything. So we could just bring the rook here because it's the only open file in readiness. Shall we do that? Let's just bring the rook here. Time's running down, but it's five minutes. Got 10 second increment, but I don't want to um, abuse that. Could go there, actually. That's where he's probably going. He's not doing that yet. So why has he done that? Because he wants to hit our bishop. So if we bring the bishop back, or we could still hit the rook. But it's developing their piece for them. I don't really want to do that. Oh, we could. No, we can't because the knight is defending. If we took, attack the rook. Or just bring the bishop back. Excuse me. Just bring the bishop back. Knight moves. Just bring the bishop back for now. I'm hoping that they're starting to get impatient. So as you can see as well, just because they were late to the party, you know, they were still in their bed, doesn't mean we've won the game. All it means is for me, psychologically, um, there's a slightest of tempo wins. Now the Rook is looking to go on to one of these areas here, but it's got a white square bishop on, it's got the knight. Can the knight, the knight can come here and attack the rook. So I lose tempo. Hmm. Go there, the bishop can just come here. So it's no real play for the rook on the file, is there? Unless we push this pawn here to stop the knight from jumping to that square. It's probably a little bit slow. But we'll... Oh, and also it gives the bishop this sank diagonal as well. Ooh, tricky times. Got to be careful. My time is running out. Could bring the bishop here. I really want to own this file with the rooks, though. This is not good. 
Right, okay, so if we moved up, so if moved it here, knight comes to attack. It's attacking our bishop. So we have to move the rook, attacking the knight. Where is he going? It could come here, attacking the pawn. Whoa, attacking the pawn, nothing defending that. Push the pawn, defending the bishop, but also defending the pawn. Oh, that's a bit ugly, isn't it? That's a bit ugly. Why don't I just take the knight off the board? <laughs> bishop takes. Go for simplification. I think that's what I'm going to do. I'm taking the knight off the board. Simplification, all that was going too far for me. Maybe the problem we've got with this situation is we need to probably bring this pawn up before we start taking stuff off the board because that bishop will be taken. And he's got this area here blocking our king coming to protect. So he's defending himself, okay. I'm going to bring the pawn up here so the king, if we get time, can come here supporting for the exchanges. He's doing the same thing. So like I said, this kind of position should be a draw-ish, really. I'm not adverse to going for a draw if they're not adverse to going for the draw. Let's go up. Our king is a little bit further advanced up the board. Is that going to make a difference? And thing is, the way I've got my board set up, I can't see if they've offered a draw unless, of course, it shows up on the screen somewhere. Um, got to be careful because this pawn behind here is on a white square. And just push. I bet they have offered a draw. And push this one as well. And they must be thinking, well, he's not even... So if we come across, looking to hit here, he'll be wanting to get his king there to press down onto ours. Oh, but no, he's just going to go there, isn't he, with the bishop? So shall we push this? Mm. You. Ooh, sticky, sticky, sticky. What do we do? Options and choices. Move the bishop. Put a check on the king. Just put a check on the king. Maybe move the king up. Yeah, maybe move the king up. Am I blocking my bishop? Please don't let me be blocking the bishop. Let's go here. Can't come around there, can't come around there. If it does all that, then we get some sort of passer. Comes around with the bishop, locks itself in. That's all a bit drawishy. This traps his bishop, but not fully. I want to scroll to see if they've offered a draw. It should show on the screen though, shouldn't it? If it's off of the draw, not down on the bottom. Got my small screen up. Or shall I just offer the draw? Does it? Yeah, I'm going to go down. I'm going to see if they say yes. Oh, they've moved. Hey, draw greed. There we go. Nice one. <laughs> 